All right, I'm so excited to be here. I know I didn't give any advance notice. I know I'm just in the middle of the day, but I know that we're gonna have so many replay viewers that it's okay. It's not for the live, right? It's for the replay. So we're gonna talk about some fun things. We're gonna talk about some things that are in depth. We're gonna talk about team leadership. We'll talk about duplication. We'll talk about building, and I'll make it in a way that isn't boring. I was the top recruiter out of a million distributors in a multi-billion dollar company, and that was over the course of three years. That was something that was extremely, extremely hard for me because I'm naturally an introvert. And so this is something that I went out and I did, and I learned a lot of different things that will help you out in your business. So I will go through all of these things that I possibly can in this amount of time for you to help you out in your business. This will give you a lot of perspective on what you need to do. So the first thing I want to start out with is this, and I'm going to simplify. I, I spent a couple hours going through this specific topic, but we're going to shorten things up for you. Is you need to ask yourself, which one of these three people are you? Are you a victim? A victim, right, is a prisoner of their past. A victim is always blaming everything that went wrong, everything that happened in their past. They're always looking at all the reasons, oh, well, well, my area is hard. Well, products are backordered. Um, they're looking for, oh, I'm not sure about this part of the compensation plan. They go through everything they possibly can, and what they're doing is they're specifically finding reasons why they can't have success in anything in life. It could be being a spouse. It could be being a parent. It could be specifically in your business. So the first question is, is we need to ask, are we a victim in our network marketing business? Are you a victim? And sometimes we go in and out of being a victim and a survivor. I'm going to talk about a third group of people, though, not just victims and survivors. The second group of people are the survivors. The survivors, most people don't realize this, that's the vast majority of network marketers that are at the meetings. They show up to all the events. They show up to all the meetings, but they aren't doing the income producing activities. They show up and what they're doing is, is they're hanging on and I'm not trying to belittle, I'm not ripping on survivors because that could be a huge accomplishment if they were a victim. But survivors aren't the ones that make money in network marketing. Survivors only make money when they transition and become conquerors. So you've got to ask yourself, what are you? We're talking about life, but we're also talking about your network marketing business. Are you a victim? Are you a survivor? Or are you a conqueror? Are you the person that, right, just keeps showing up to me? That's great. That's the path of least resistance because we know that we need to be reaching out and talking to new people in order to make it go. So the question is, is you need to ask yourself, and sometimes maybe a specific day you're a survivor and another day you're a conqueror. How can you become a consistent conqueror? How can you become that conqueror that goes and is, is doing what it takes to be able to make your business happen? And those are some of the things that we're going to specifically talk about. Those are going to be some of the things that I'm going to help you out. Those are going to be some of the things that I will break down for you as we start on the income producing activity. So the vast majority of you will be replay viewers as I'm leaving out of town tomorrow. I'm going on a date night tonight because I was just in Mexico, did my mastermind retreat. My family was there, but I was working most of the time. I was home for a day for Halloween. And then after that, I ended up going to Europe for five days, at home for two days, and I'm taking my two oldest kids for a tennis tournament. So got to do date night. Got to make sure that you take care of the things that are the most important in life. So let me tell you something about that as far as this is just leadership in life. So what I love for all of you is drop in the comments where you're watching from as I like to get to know my audience. And so I'd love for you to just drop in the comments where you're watching from. Don't be shy. Even if you're watching the replay, I'm going to come back. I'm going to look at all of these comments. But um, <clears throat> here's a really quick lesson before I go into something I think will dramatically help your business. I asked the question once to a leader I really looked up to, and I said, how do I stay balanced? This is a leadership answer for all of you in question. And he looked at me, 
and it surprised me because this was actually a spiritual leader, but I knew that I was going full-fledged in my business. And he said, balance is a myth. It's impossible to be balanced and still be crazy successful. And he's not talking about just success with worldly success. What he said was, specifically, is we need to have focus in order to have success in anything. And he said that if you have a new baby, you're not going to be balanced. If you start a brand new job, you're probably not going to be balanced. If you're studying and you're um, going through, through med school to become a doctor, you're not going to be balanced. Balance is a myth. Balance does not create success. The key is, he said, don't lose sight of what's most important to you. So lift up from the bottom. So for me, what I've done, and this is something to help you out with leadership, is I've created minimum goals. I tell people, show me your minimums and I'll show you your future. Because we always talk about the big, hairy, audacious goals that comes from the book Good to Great. We talk about our huge goals and we're dreamers. Not bad to be dreamers, right? I remember right when I started Network Mark and I had these pictures of this nice car going to Bora Bora, humanitarian trips. It's not bad to be dreamers. But we're all dreamers pretty much in network marketing. You want to accomplish those dreams, you've got to set up those minimum goals. You've got to set up what are you willing to do when you don't feel like it? Is your why stronger than your mood swings? Because we all have those mood swings, right? I know how I feel. I know how I get when I'm hangry, when I haven't had anything to eat, right? And I'm tired and I'm hungry. I become hangry. I turn into a completely different person. All of you have been hangry before, right? If you've been hangry before, again, whether you're watching the live or the replay, drop an amen in the comments because I know we all have been hangry before. Some of you on a consistent basis. So as I'm going through that, let me give an example for me. Balance lift up from the bottom. I set those minimum goals. For me, it was I haven't missed in over 10 years one day of reading personal development. I have missed one day of saying prayers at night. You may not even believe in any higher being. That's okay. The, the principle I'm teaching is set up. This is your castle, right, is your dream, and you're setting up the moat to protect that dream as you're going. I made sure that I haven't, I haven't, I've only missed one day of reading some sort of spiritual reading in the last 10 years. That's it. Only one day. I haven't missed one week working out at the gym. An entire week I haven't missed. Not one week in over 10 years. Now I'm a generic, right, coach and consultant and public speaker to the network marketing industry. And so things, right, have transitioned as far as what my definition of being in the trenches is. But when I was in the trenches, my goal was minimum 100. 100 calls, right? This is before social media, I get it, but 100 calls. Some of those were to team members, some of those were to leaders, some of those were to new prospects, but that was my goal. And then my goal was to have a minimum of five new prospects that I spoke to every single day. So I'm going to give you my five, five, five strategy, and then we'll go into the income producing activities. But I, I just want you to remember, maybe someone typed that in the bottom is, Minimums become maximums. Show me your minimums and I'll show you your future. What are you willing to do when you don't feel like it? What are you willing to do? Go look at the greatest athletes. Go look at the greatest musicians. What do they do no matter what? Can you imagine Michael Phelps, right, who holds the record for the most amount of medals at the Olympics? Can you imagine him saying, you know what, I just don't feel like it. Of course, he had those great days where he probably went above and beyond. But the key was his minimum, the bar had been set so high that he set himself up for success. So you've got to set yourself up for success. You've got to set yourself up and create that moat around your castle because we, have, we make about 35,000 decisions every single day. And guess what? Most of those decisions don't even feel like decisions because they're habits. So if you want to reach the next level of success, you need to start scaling up those habits. 
so that eventually you're going to be like, for example, like I gave you. For me now, I don't even need to track saying my prayers or reading personal development. I've read over 700 books the last 10 plus years. Now, if you know everything and you do nothing, you know absolutely nothing. So you need to make sure that it's about execution. It's about getting into action. Again, I'm going to go into the income producing activities that I think is going to help you out. So the 555 strategy. Add, and you can go much faster and do much more if you want to. You can do less, but add five new friends to Facebook every single day. Every single day. Message five people non-business related because what we're doing is, is we're nurturing those relationships. We are networkers. Sometimes we forget that and we become just professional, just salespeople, spammers in people's face. I have no problem with people being direct at all. Some of you are going to approach people the first time. Some of you are going to approach people the third time. There is no right or wrong. And if somebody tells you otherwise, I think they're wrong because each person's different on what that bold, authentic version of you is. For some of you, you feel just inauthentic if you don't approach someone right away. For others, you feel inauthentic if you approach them right away. So the goal is to be that bold, authentic version of you. But imagine if you did that. If you did the 555, that means, and imagine if you had 10 people on your team doing it. That means that you would be approaching over 1,800 people about your business. Over 1,800 people a year. And if you had 10 people doing that on your team, that's over 18,000 people. Do you think you'd have success? That's just doing the minimums, right? Successful people just do the basics better. Let me repeat that. We're always looking for the secret sauce, right? The magic tips. Successful people just do the basics better. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do no matter what? When you don't feel like it, when you feel a little bit sick, when you're a little bit tired and exhausted, when life hits you upside the head and something dramatic happened, what are you willing to do? So you got to figure out what's your 555. Is it 111? Is it 333? Is it... 777, seven, seven, I almost said six, and then I stopped myself there. I didn't think that would go over really well. But you've got to figure out what that is for you. What's your 555? Five, five? What's your DMO? What's your daily method of operation? What are you going to do every single day no matter what? Hopefully that's helpful for you. Minimums become maximums. What are your minimums? Again, I've said it three times. Show me your minimums. I'll show your future. What are your minimums? Part of that, again, I'm still getting income producing activities. I just keep, keep having all of these flood of thoughts that are coming to my mind that I want to train you all on is what I would do is I'd take a piece of paper. So you get a piece of paper and I would create just two categories, okay? You don't really need to see that. Just two categories, left side, right side. And what I would do is, is I would list on the left side all of your likes. What are the things that you absolutely like? And on the right side, lift, uh, list all of your loves. So for me personally, my likes would be I like watching my favorite NBA basketball team. Okay, it's, I've been a diehard Los Angeles Laker fan. We've gone through some incredible times. We've gone through some rough patches. We're pretty excited this year. That's a like for me. I like, um, and I could go through right, all of the things. You just have to distinguish. Some loves. I love spending time with my family. I love spending um, time influencing other people, making a difference in the world. Um, I love, like I'm doing date night with my wife. That goes with family. I love doing family vacations. I've done seven family vacations this year. That's probably what I'm most proud of this year, seven family vacations this year. So list all of your likes and then list your loves. You can't gain something new without giving up something old. You can't gain something new without giving up something old. So if you want to be able to gain your loves, you're going to have to give up some of your likes. So for me, and I, I'm not saying all of them. We all have our outlets, okay? So I'm not telling you have to be a crazy person. It's up to you. I didn't watch TV my first six months in network marketing because I understood this principle of giving up some of my likes for my loves, okay? I stopped over 10 years ago list, uh, listening to music when I went to the gym and I started listening to personal development. Okay, you need to decide 
what you're willing to give up. For me, my outlet, everyone has their outlet. You may say, oh, music's my thing, my outlet. I'm not telling you have to give up anything. I'm just giving you examples of what I did. You've got to decide how big your goals are. The bigger your goals are, the more sacrifice you're going to have to make. And guess what? When you give up more likes, you're going to gain more of your loves. And in the end, you're going to have more time to be able to go back if you want to and be able to have some of those likes as hobbies. It's just a principle. you got to get out of balance to have any sort of balance in life. And so I would challenge all of you. So if you're willing to take that challenge and list your likes and your loves, drop a yes in the comments below, whether you're watching the live or the replay, like I said, I'm going to come back and watch this Get list of. So I love, you know, Amber. She's listing already a bunch that she's gone through um, and done. And, and I love that. I think that's important. We've got to figure out what we're willing to do. So drop a yes in the comments. And that's just, it's good to make a public declaration, right? That what you're willing to do. So is that making sense for you so far? Is that... Are you tracking with me? If you're tracking with me, drop any emoji. I've been trying to expand my emoji game. Um, I'm up to about eight or nine emojis that I'm using, but I'm always looking for new emojis. Sometimes I see the emojis people drop, and I'm like, ooh, it's good, you know? So, um, and Katie, Ozzy, I love it. I'll be in Australia in March. I think March 9th and 10th, but I'll be Gold Coast for sure. Uh, we'll see. I may go to Perth as well. I'm not sure, but I'm going to do a huge event March 9th and 10th, Gold Coast. I'll give you details later on it. All right. So now we get to the income producing activities. All those other things, I wasn't planning on saying those things. It's funny. You prepare content sometimes and then you just kind of go with it. You go with intuition. You go any which direction you can. But I just want all of you to challenge yourselves to create those minimums to create that moat, to create what you're willing to do no matter what, and then go execute. And I want to help you with, yes, leadership, but also part of leadership, as we all know, is speed of leader, speed of the pack. How in the crap are you supposed to lead other people when you aren't doing what you need to do? So the number one thing for leadership is become the person you'd want to recruit. Whatever we do well duplicates sometimes. Whatever we do poorly almost always duplicates. Those of you that have kids, you know what I'm talking about. I've got four kids, 13, 11, 8, 4 years old. Everything I do poorly duplicates. It's like being a parent made me to, made me a way better person. I'm going to become a way better person because it's like, kids, what are you doing? And they pick it up for me. I'll give you an example. My uh, daughter, who's 11 years old, when she was, I think it was five years old, She's in, um, she's in her, her primary class at church, and the teacher pulls her out and comes talks to me. And the teacher just says to me that um, my daughter was going around, and she was just like a couple of the people that she was mad at. She'd go and she'd just kind of squeeze their wrists. And they just said, I, you know, what is she doing? And I just thought, oh, I don't know where she gets that from. Guess where she got it from? Me. Because I thought when she was acting up, I didn't want to spank her, but I wanted her to know, right? And so I just kind of just do like quick squeeze and say, hey, no, Kaya, don't do that. Don't turn me into child services. Hopefully that's okay. So I just kind of squeeze her. So I'm like, I don't want to spank her. So I just kind of squeeze her like that. So what is she doing? She's going around thinking, okay, well, that's what I do when I'm mad at somebody. She's squeezing her, her friends and people in her primary class when she's five years old. I'm thinking, oh, so when the, of course. You know, I know successful people take full responsibility. I was still learning leadership skills, right? So, of course, when the primary teacher comes to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't know where she got that from. I probably said something like she got it from her friends, you know, at preschool or something. Who knows what I said, right? But that's important to understand. So that's why this industry can be so hard at times because it forces us to become better human beings. You can try to fake it all you want, but people see right through you. People can see your strengths. People can see your weaknesses, and they know it. So you can try to fake it all you want, but they know. They know, and they see. And you can talk about how you're in so much momentum, but if they get on the teen Zoom, and you got the same freaking people you've had on for the last four months, right? You're thinking, why do you keep telling me we're in 
momentum. Why do you keep telling me to contact and reach out to new people? Because you're not. You're not. Speed leader to speed of the pack. Become the person you would want to recruit. So here's a question that you can ask yourself. And again, you can take all of these things and make them your own and teach your teams these things. But here's a question to ask yourself. Based on what you did yesterday, would you recruit you? Based on what you did last week, would you want to recruit you? Based on what you did last month, would you want to recruit you? Maybe the answer is yes. Great. Congratulations. Can you do more? Can you be more? Can you get better? Because this next part that we're going to go through, for some of you, it's just going to be some, some tough love. Some really, really tough love. So I would love it um, as we're going through this if you can just – let me know anytime anything stands out to you, what's, what stands out and what's helpful for you, because that helps me as I'm training to know what really resonates with people and what to train more on. So maybe it's just insights or aha moments. Maybe it's just reminders as you're going through. So this is going to be some tough love right here, okay? So goal is not to offend anybody, but I got to be straight up with you. That's the only way we can go to the next level. How many of you are fake working? You're survivors. What do I mean by fake work? You avoid the highest income producing activities. What you do is, is you get on all the Zooms, you do all the trainings, you study the comp plan, you um, study everything you possibly can, but you typically avoid doing the real work, doing the work you know that's going to help you out the most, that's going to that's going to create the most amount of revenue and volume, doing the work that you know you know that your team needs to see you doing. Now, here's the reality: every single one of you goes in and out of this. Every single one of you goes in and out of the income-producing activities and, and avoids at some point or another. How do I know? Because I was the top recruiter. I was the top recruiter out of a million distributors. I don't, I'm not a coach that just teaches things that I haven't done. These are things that I've done. These are things that I've been through. I've had success as a distributor. And I know that all of you are there at some point. Now, the goal is to be there less often. And the goal is to have more focus. The question was asked to both Warren Buffett and it was asked to Bill Gates separately of what it takes to be successful. And they gave a bunch of different answers. But one of, the, one of the answers they both gave, one of the first answers they both gave separately was focus. It's focus. The question is, though, where is the focus comes, comes from? And that's why I talked about the 555. That's why I talked about minimums become maximums. Because discipline isn't there to take away from what you want. Discipline's there to give you everything you've ever wanted. Because we have the exact same amount of time. Look at all the greats, the people you feel like are the most accomplished in the world. They didn't have more time than you. They had more focus than you. The ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. So too many of us, we just think, oh, I'm not good enough, or I can't do that, I can't do this. You know what? My greatest fear when I started network marketing was public speaking. That's what I do for a living now. Been to Europe twice. I'm going to Europe again to speak all over. I've been to Mexico to speak this year. I've been to Canada to speak this year. I've been to Australia to speak this year. I've been all over the United States to speak this year. That was my greatest fear. But what you don't realize is a lot of your perceived weaknesses are actually hidden strengths, but only if you allow them to be. It's like how people say your struggle is your story. Your struggle is the most powerful part of your story. But only if you overcome it and become a, a become a conqueror, not just a survivor. Your te the test becomes your testimony. But too many of you are fake working. I need to stop fake working. One of the things that I wrote on my in my office that I had and I had on my mirror in my bathroom was is what I'm doing right now making me the most amount of money. Because there's red time and there's green time. So red time is when people aren't available. And you can't, you can't reach out to them, right? They're less available. Maybe they're working. Maybe it's an inappropriate time. It's 6 a.m. Maybe it's 11 p.m. 
So at that time, that's when you can focus a lot more on doing maybe more of the personal development, learning, studying the trainings. But when people are available, think of just a stoplight, green time, right? Green means go. Let's go. Let's blitz it. Let's make it happen. So when green time is the time, then that's what we want to do is we want to make sure we're focusing on the income producing activities. So you've got to ask yourself these questions. Is what I'm doing right now making me the most amount of money? Because the key is focus. Millionaires don't work harder than six-figure earners. Six-figure earners don't work harder than a lot of janitors that are people that are making minimum wage. There's people that are making minimum wage that are working harder than six-figure earners. Billionaires don't work harder than millionaires. It's focus. What are you focused on? And which vehicle are you in? All of you have an incredible vehicle to make a residual income, to be able to go chase your life's passions and your dreams. But that's why you need to ask yourself, this is tough love. Is your why alive? You may be thinking, what do you mean? My why is really big. I want to get my spouse out of their job. I want to take my kids on family vacations. I want to travel the world with my friends and do humanitarian trips. My wise pick, really? Are your actions following or matching your why? Because if they're not, my question to you is, is your why a lie? I know that's really tough, love. That may be something you just may have just stabbed you right in the heart. But I think it's important to ask these hard questions. I think it's important to ask yourself these hard questions. Okay? Hopefully we're, you're tracking with me right now. Hard questions, okay? So let's drop in the comments below. We'll get all the people that are, you know, end up looking at the comments curious. And let's put um, hard questions in the comments below, whether you're watching the, the live or the replay. So sometimes you got to ask yourself the hard questions as you're going. Again, these are all principles that I'm trying to help you out to become the leader that you need to become. Because the number one thing for duplication is become the leader that you need to become. So I'm writing down a couple notes right now because this has come to my mind. I still haven't even gotten to the income producing activities because I just keep having all these thoughts that come to my mind. And so hopefully these things are helping you out. So I think it's important to, <clears throat> I would write these down. I would write these down, all of these. <clears throat> I would write all of these down because this will give you more perspective on how you need to work, how you need to focus. So thanks, Tracy, for dropping hard questions in there. Thanks, Glenda, for um, giving some of your insight in there. You love it. Is your why alive? It's brutal, huh? Sometimes we need that brutal, tough love. So we're going to go through three different tiers for the income-producing activities. And obviously, tier one is the highest income-producing activity tier then tier two, and then tier three. Understand that every single one of these are very important. Every single one of these income producing activities are very important, but we need to prioritize which are the most important. <clears throat> so tier one, number one, okay? Tier one, number one. Talking to new people is the highest income producing activity. Talking to brand new people. If you aren't, my mentor used to tell me, and he's made over $30 million in network marketing, he said, if you aren't talking to brand new people, you aren't working in this business. That's how focused he was. Because too many of us, we know the plan for the plan and the plan and the plan and the plan, right? Our comp plan pays 62.7 ways. I'm going to teach you everything. Working in this business is talking to brand new people. He would tell me, if you aren't talking to new people, you aren't really working. And I started calling it fake working. You're doing the busy work. So you can say when people are like, how's it going? I'm busy. At the end of the week, and I ask you how many new contacts you made, and you worked 20 hours this week. Well, two, right? And a lot of people try to justify, well, I kind of reached out to Sally and Julie, so I'll count those as new contacts as well. You know what a real new contact is. Be direct. Number two, I wrote down. This is still in tier one. Third party validations. 
So whatever your team's using, whether that's Facebook Messenger chat with another person, whether that's doing a, a Zoom, whether that's in person and it's another person validating, whether that's a three-way call, third-party validation is just another voice. So that's number two of the highest income producing activity. I used to tell my teams, I don't care how many new contacts you've made. How many third-party validations have you made? Because people are going to look at you and either going to say you're too good or you're not good enough. Think about that. They're too good and they say, oh, Tracy, Amber, Jennifer, I, of course you can do this business. I, I'm just not you. Or they're going to say, oh, Rob, like in the back of their minds, yeah, I would never follow you. So either you're too good or you're not good enough. That's why you've got to have a third-party validation. You've got to have a third-party validation. So now inside of that, number two is it could be with your team and it could be your own personal ones. And people think all the time that it's got to be with an upline with your own personal ones. No, it doesn't. Some of my favorite things to do was when I had a new contact is do third-party validation with people in my downline. Think about that one. Why? Because then they knew I was working and they knew I was following the system. So I loved doing third-party validations with my downline. Again, working this business, talking to new people. So if, if your team is just like blitzing like crazy and you nonstop, they're getting in front of new people, well, great. And you probably don't have as much time to make your own new contacts. I would still try to make time, not try, I would make some time, but you won't have as much time. But the second they stop putting me in front of new people, I'm not going to go into management mode. Too many people in network marketing, they go to management mode. And they wonder why their business is just stale. Because they're managing. No wonder everyone else is managing. So if they weren't getting me in front of new people on my team, then that's why I said, okay, great. I'm going to go reach out and find my own new contacts again. If they were putting me in front of crazy amounts of new people and that took up all my time, then great. I would ride that as fast and as furious as I possibly could. Yes, third-party validation with a customer, that is part of an income-producing activity. That, that qualifies. Absolutely great question, Maria. So I've got I've already done a couple hours of training today. i got a couple more hours. So I may have to throw in a recall at a cough drop. Those of you that know me, that's kind of like tradition. It's crazy, I know. I know it's not appropriate. You're not supposed to have anything in your mouth when you're talking, speaking. So hopefully you forgive me if I have to do that. I still have three more trainings that are an hour long. So um, I appreciate all of you for tuning in. Those of you that are already tuned in for 32 minutes, good work, good work. Are you finding value? Yes, if you are, drop value in the comments. Is this helpful for you? Is this giving you perspective? Is this helping you? Uh, hopefully it's all making sense. I always try to concise and make everything just break it down into bullet points to, to help you out. And what I'd love for you to do is right now, again, whether you're watching the live or the replay, tag anyone you feel like needs this, whether it's your upline, downline, sideline, tag anyone you feel like needs this. Tag them in the comments right now. So thanks, Jennifer, Maria, uh, Katie, love that feedback. Um, uh, we've got a bunch. Okay, great. So we'll keep going. So thanks, Tracy. <clears throat> Glad you're finding value in it. Number three, we're still in tier one. Add to your lead list. What's your lead list? Lead list are people that you're going to talk to about your business or products. So that could be, you could go on your phone and you're adding to your lead. That could be, you could put it anywhere you want. You could put it somewhere in your laptop, computer, your phone notes. You could put it, I like to have a visual. So I always, I'm looking at my whiteboard right now. Um, I would put on my whiteboard and add to that lead list. And so it could be new Facebook contacts that you make. So <clears throat> what you want to do is, don't worry, Nina, more is coming, more is coming. Glad you, Glenda, Amber, I'm glad you're all finding value. So add to your lead list. You've got to add to it because if the highest income producing activity is talking to new people, you got to always make sure that you've got people you're adding to that lead list. So that's done with tier number one. So now we move on and we're going to tier number two. So tier number two would be reaching out to team members. Again, I'm not saying tier number two or tier number three aren't important. They're absolutely important. I'm just prioritizing because too many people, they like to take the path of least resistance. I did. Everyone does. But I just knew that my dreams were here. My fears were here. On a scale one to ten, my fears were nine. My dreams were ten. What's going to win out? 
Are you going to let your dreams win out? Or are you going to let your fears win out? What's going to win out? You got to decide. So I was going to make sure that my dreams were going to win out. So thanks, Tracy. I see you tagged a bunch of people in there. Appreciate it. Um, let's make sure everyone gets this training. So reach out to team members, okay? And it shouldn't take that long when you're reaching out, when you're helping make it go with them. It's not something that needs to be, right, where every single person has this long conversation. Sometimes it's a text. Sometimes it's a voice message on Facebook Messenger. Sometimes you're tagging them to trainings like these. There's different things that you can do. So reach out to team members. Number two for tier two would be, I would say nurture those current leads or relationships. Now again, when I say nurture, don't ever over nurture. Some people are like, I'm building a relationship. What's the highest income producing activity? Talking to brand new people. But some people are like, I've been reaching out to this person for the last six months and I've reached out to them. You know what I mean? Like at some point, then what you're gonna do is, is you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to um, make money in this business because attraction marketing i think is misconstrued misinterpreted where people just think they're going to have unlimited leads because of the posts that they make yeah there's 0.0001 percent of those people that it happens to most of the time attraction marketing thanks katie for tagging a bunch most of the time in attraction marketing what it is you're creating a brand that helps build your likability okay i wrote a book called the game of networking Let's see if i can find it who's read the game of networking it's really it just teaches you how to be a great networker. 95% of the content isn't network marketing. And then I cater the 5% to network marketing. But I talk about the different laws and I go in depth on them. But your goal is to increase your likability, your credibility, your recallability slash visibility. Because it doesn't matter how likable and credible you are. If you're not visible, people don't know. They don't see you. They don't know what you're doing or anything like that. And then after that, the law of profitability. That's a win-win situation. So now maybe instead of closing one out of 10 people, now let's say I'm reaching out to Amber or Katie or Tracy. Now they've seen my content. They get to know me. I've built that rapport, that credibility, right? That, that trust, that likability. So now maybe I close two out of 10 people. You may say, that doesn't sound like a lot. It's double. I didn't over-exaggerate. It's double. That's a lot to me. You just doubled everything. So you need to make sure that you understand what attraction marketing really is as you're building this business. So nurture current leads relationships. For me, I've done it now. Again, you gotta figure out what your own style of personality is. Don't overdo it. But my goal was the law of 250. I was gonna reach out to 250 people every single month, non-business related. And some of you are like, that takes so much time. That's like nine people every day. I do it before I go to the gym. And I try to make it always somebody I haven't spoken to in at least a month minimum. And I send a voice message and that's it. It could be someone that I just made Facebook friends with and it's be like, hey, so glad to connect. You know, I maybe I added them. You know, I added you. I saw that you're in the same Facebook group, you know, with hiking as me. I love hiking. What's the best hike you've ever done? Hope you have a great day. That was like 15 seconds. That's it. That's not that hard. And I do that. And other people could be a friend from high school. Hey, Johnny, haven't spoken to you in, you know, in like six years. Looks like your family's great. Just wanted to say hello. That's it. Just be a good freaking human being. So I do it every single month, and I've done it for over 10 years. Now, again, that doesn't work if you're not reaching out to people about your business as well, but I, I separate the two. That's why I said five, 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 five. Add five new people every single day on Facebook. Make sure you reach out to five new people, non-business related. Ask five people to look at the products, right, or business. That's it, okay? Again, these aren't things that I'm just giving like theories or ideas. I was a top recruiter out of a million distributors, and I'm naturally an introvert. But my ambitions and my dreams and my why just beat out my fears, and it's taken me forever. I mean, to give you perspective, I'd made millions of dollars, and when I started doing Facebook Lives three years ago, I sucked at him and I was freaked out of my mind. It took me a good a good year to a year and a half to figure out how to do Facebook Lives. No joke, I'd make millions of dollars. It's just not my nature. But I'm tough, I've got grit, and I'm gonna figure it out. And so I hope that helps you, that just the law of 250. So that's tier two, number two, as we're talking about the income producing activities. Tier three now, again, all of these three tiers are important. Team trainings. 
That's number one for tier number three. Okay, now these are all interchangeable, I think, tier three. There's no order on tier three. Uh, personal development is number two. Again, this is the guy that's read slash listened to over 700 books, okay? So I'm not saying it's not, I know it's huge. I know it's a huge part. But again, I don't want people to get caught up in the personal development black hole. What happens when they get caught up in the personal development black hole? All right. They just start studying everything and, and they don't do anything. What's our goal? Our goal is to make money. Why is that our goal? Because time's the most precious thing you and I have on this earth. And because when we make money in network marketing, we create res residual income to be able to go live our life. I, I don't believe God sent us here on this earth to be average. I think all of us have incredible talents and abilities. Let's go chase those talents and abilities and residual income can help do that. So tier number three, team trainings, personal development, um, and studying anything relevant to your company. All three of those. Those are all things that, you know, I would say that that absolutely can consistently help you out and help you to just in your business, help you with everything. Now, part of that, that I think this goes with leadership and this goes with duplication and team building is this. Okay, hopefully those, those income producing activities, if they were helpful for you, drop helpful in the comments below. Um, and again, bunch of you, I know you're tagging people. I appreciate you tagging people. I wanna make sure nobody misses this. But the, it, people ask me all the time, what's one thing I wish I would have known when I started network marketing? And this, this is what I'll tell you. I wish, I wish I would have known the importance of launching somebody brand new. I wish I would have known. What do I mean by that? I did $45,000 in sales my first three weeks in network marketing part-time. And I thought after that, I just managed for five months, hoping one person did what I did. Why? Because it was so scary and so hard for me to reach out to new people that after that, it was just painful. And at that point, I, of course, I had some people that started quitting, friends and family. And so I was just like, oh, I just can't handle this pain. So I just managed. I just thought I'm going to get other people to do what I did. And I didn't understand the value of launching somebody. So when somebody starts right away, I think all too often we get caught up in training-itis. And they get caught in this black hole. And what I would say is training doesn't work, work trains. Okay. So what I mean by that is I'm not saying training is irrelevant. I mean, that's what I do. I'm a trainer. But unless people actually take action and work, it doesn't work. That's the highest form of training. We need to be better at executing rather than planning and making the plan for the plan of the plan. And so what I learned was this, and this is the analogy that I give to people. Understand in the income producing activities that talking to brand new people and tier one all everything in tier one is the fire the fuel is tier two and tier three too many people are focused on tier two and tier three they're taking fuel and they're just throwing it on this campfire but there's no fire in the campfire the fire hasn't even been ignited yet maybe it was at one point but it died and you're in management mode you got to keep the fire going you want to turn the fire into a bonfire you got to stay in in tier one and then tier two and tier three is throwing a little bit of fuel on that fire. But too many people are throwing fuel and they wonder why, well, what's going on? My business isn't taking off. Well, there's no fire yet. You got to create the fire. Here's another analogy. When I'm talking about launching the newest person, right? That goes with income producing activities, tier one, tier two, right? Of helping them to launch because leaders launch other leaders. Distributors sign up other distributors and customers. Leaders launch teams. Distributors just sign up people. Just because they signed up doesn't mean they're recruited yet. When they start out, it's like they're on their deathbeds. Okay, I hope I apologize. I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but this is graphic. It's like they're on their deathbeds. Anything goes wrong, they're done. They're quitting. Anything goes wrong, it's over. They're done. Anything. Um. I'm talking the average person. The average person gets three no's and they quit network marketing. So somebody made fun of them and said, I can't believe you're doing network marketing. Done, right? 
they contact somebody brand new and they reject them. Done. So your goal is, is, is there a life support is to give them oxygen. And if you can help them to reach out to brand new people right away, now all of a sudden their mind thinking in possibilities. Oh my goodness, if Martha joins my business, this is just going to go crazy. If Roger joins my business, this is going to go absolutely nuts. If Andy said, yes, I'm so excited. The brain starts thinking in the possibilities rather than the fears. But they go to bed and you had them watch the training and you didn't get them to action. You didn't get them watched. All of a sudden now, what are they doing? They're starting to think of a lot of times, right? Most people, the average person, oh no. They're just thinking like how scary it is and how hard it is to reach new people. They're not thinking about the dreams and the possibilities. So next analogy, I like to give analogies, okay? Good leaders have vision. Great leaders, of course they have vision, but great leaders give vision. Stephen Covey says his definition of leadership is communicating to one the worth and potential so well, they see it in themselves. So you want to transition from being a good leader to a great leader. You have to empower other people. you got to communicate this vision so well. They see their worth and potential in themselves. So when somebody brand new starts and you're the so-called supportive upline that doesn't launch them, this is what you're doing. You're getting them to fly an airplane. They've never flown an airplane. You're an expert at flying the airplane. The airplane is network marketing, okay? So you get them to fly the airplane and they're co-pilot with you. And what you do is, is let's say I'm saying to Lori, Lori's never done network marketing. She's co-pilot with me. She just signed up. She gets in the airplane and I say, Lori, here you go. Here's a training manual. Read this. Here's a couple YouTube links. Watch these links. If you need anything, Lori, just, just reach out to me. I'm here for you, Lori. I'm so supportive. I want to help you out with your goals and your dreams. And I want to make things happen. So anything you need, Lori, help me. And I get out of the plane. What's Lori thinking? Lori's not going to go fly the freaking plane on her own. Lori's thinking, I'm out. This is scary. This is hard. i got to ride co-pilot with Lori. I got to help Lori make it happen. So the second Lori launches, okay, this is my biggest tip, biggest tip of how I became the top recruiter. My biggest tip, okay? And I didn't just do it once. Um, years later, there was a company that had done about $4 billion in sales, and I created a, a new company for them. I was, a, I was a consultant and became a distributor. And I ended up doing, when I launched, um, I ended up doing over a million dollars in sales that first month. So I've done it. I know how to launch. I know how to recruit. And the key there is the number one thing for becoming that top recruiter is it's uncomfortable. I get it. But I got them launched on the spot. So if Katie signs up right now with me, if Jennifer signs up to me right now with me, right now, right this second, I'm getting everything I can. What does that mean? I'm getting you to – I'm getting you to – Whatever your team system is, call, text, voice message, Facebook Messenger. I'm getting you to reach out to as many people as I freaking possibly can right on the spot. I'm not saying, hey, wait for your products to come in in three to five days. I'm not saying, hey, go watch these six trainings, whatever. What works is what duplicates. All they need to know, all they need to know is just their story. Right? What are they excited about? Why are they excited? That's it. In less than two minutes. That's it. And then do some sort of different third-party validation, whatever your system is for your company. But that's all I'm doing is I did it right away because I don't want them to feel like, oh, they've got to know all this stuff. And all of a sudden, it's analyzed, paralyzed. I don't know what to do. And so that's all I did. Right away, I got them launched. So some people, I would start out, most people would say, let's just get on with your Fab Five. And some people, that would overwhelm. So I'd start out with just one. And after one, I'd go for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And some people, I could only get to one. That's it. For other people, I literally got some people to make all day. I would just sit there with them all day making new contacts. Can you see how I was able to recruit? Because I got in people's circle of influence right away. It wasn't like, okay, we'll wait two or three or four days. Because most people, if they don't do anything in the first 48 hours, they're unlikely to do anything at all. If they don't do anything in the first week. 
this is my made up statistic here is I think that it's that it's over 90% never do anything at all. That's my made up statistic based on my own experience. 90% never do anything at all. So I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get them into action, get the most out of them. Now, of course, I've got to remind them of their goals and dreams that they've probably already given to me. Hopefully you've already asked them. I've got to remind them remind them because there's two things everybody asks themselves. One, can I do what you're doing? So I have to show them in an easy way they can do it. And number two is I got to show them it's worth it. Those are the two questions everybody asks themselves when they're making a decision. Is it worth it? Can I do it? That's it. So if you can answer those questions, they're, they're going to decide if you can answer them right and you can help them see that vision. Remember, good leaders have vision, great leaders get vision. They're going to do it. They're going to make it happen. Again, hopefully you guys are tagging your team members in this so they don't miss out. This is stuff. I'm trying to summarize stuff in less than an hour. It was just life-changing things for me. And some of these things I, I knew, but I couldn't explain them. It took me years and years to be able to break them down and explain them for all of you. This is not fluff. These are things that will change your business, which will change your life. But can you do them? Are you going to execute them? Are they just going to be ideas? Are you going to take one thing at least from this training and you're saying, I'm going to execute right now. I'm going to take action. I'm going to go make it happen. Are you going to find one thing that you're going to do? So I hope that's been helpful so far for you. Um, I'm going to drop here. This is just a free link. And on this, I have my Facebook Messenger um, bot, which sends five free trainings over the course of nine days, how to overcome objections. It gives you a free ebook that I break things down um, of how to recruit and taproot. And it's you'll read it in an hour. It's great. It's free, 100% free on it. And so if you guys go there, you'll be able to subscribe. And you guys will be able to, um, to see that and be able to get just some of those trainings and different things like that. But I could go on and on. You know what's funny is, is I didn't even go into, I'll show you guys real quickly. So look at these notes here. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six. I printed off six pages of notes to go over and I didn't cover any of those six pages. <laughs> um, because you know what, sometimes you just get in a flow and you try to think of what's going to be the most insightful things to help you all out. So I know I did this at a random time for everybody, but go there, go to NWM, which stands for Network Marketing Insights.com, and you'll get all free content there. Um, I do, if you guys ever want to get on the waiting list, I do have a paid subscription group. It's 10 courses. They're only 10 minutes long. It only opens once every six weeks. It'll open again in about a month. And um, I think I created, not because it's me, because I had over 20 different million dollar earners helped me, but I think I created the best course in network marketing. It's only 27 bucks a month, that's it. And um, you get these crazy good courses. And then I have million dollar earners every week come in and train you. So you don't just hear from me, so you get different perspectives. Um, and then I'll do one huge long training every single month. I do social media tips every week. I do motivational Monday every week. We focus on gratitude. Crazy cool community with that stuff and these offline mastermind retreats that I that I have. And so that's some of the stuff that I have so that you guys uh, know and understand if, if you want any more. If not, that's okay. Free content for you to help you out. Uh, the paid subscription group is, is closed right now. I apologize, but you can get on the waiting list and I'll let you know when it opens. I'm pretty sure it's about a month because I think it opens up after um, after GoPro. So um, that is it. So that's tgonnation.com. But again, if you found value, let me know. Maybe drop your favorite emoji again in the comments or anything. But thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, Trey, for having me on. I appreciate you, my man. And uh, it's exciting. It's fun. I, I get to see all these other people that are training you that are all really good friends of mine. And it's fun to see that. Um, I saw Bob just did it. Bob and I talk all the time. And and Brian Fryer and I talk almost every single day, and so it's just fun to see that. So thank you. Thank you so much, and um, until the next time, I hope I get to meet you all in person, and if you see me in person, come give me a huge hug.